สวัสดีครับ I'm JP m a s t a n z a Today is Friday, March 25th. Welcome to Phuket Extra, brought to you by PVCPhuket.com. The decision on whether the rules to enter Thailand will be lifted is going to depend a lot on whether there is a surge in infections or fatalities during next month's Songkran Thai New Year holiday, according to the Tourism and Sports Ministry. Officials say that the test and go scheme and Thailand pass system could be scrapped altogether by June 1st, but only if Thailand sees relatively little to no increase in cases or deaths in mid-April's Thai New Year holiday, a time of year that sees a lot of interprovincial travel and family gatherings. While water splashing has been prohibited this year, at least in Phuket, interprovincial travel is largely expected to take place nationwide. The tourism ministry targeted 7 million arrivals this year. A massive step down from the more than 39 million tourists that arrived in 2019 before the pandemic, but the ministry says they're keen to continue lifting more of the hurdles that are currently in place in order to spur more travel to the kingdom and help in economic recovery efforts. A week ago, the CCSA decided to scrap the 72-hour pre-travel RT-PCR testing for international arrivals, which will go into effect on April 1st. The next phase of the reopening is expected to take place on May 1st, with the RT-PCR test on arrival expected to be replaced with an antigen test kit check conducted by a medical professional again on arrival. Speaking at the annual general meeting of the Association of Thai Travel Agents on Thursday, Tourism and Sports Minister Pipa Ratchakit Prakan says that Songkran will be a critical test for Thailand to see if more rules will be lifted, and said that the goal is to have daily cases remain stable, with a fatality rate below 100 daily. Officials on Friday morning say that Thailand recorded just over 26,000 new COVID cases and 69 more COVID deaths over the last 24 hours. Still, the ministry's proposal regarding an end to COVID testing for tourists from June 1st onwards would require approval from the public health ministry based on the caseload, a ministry that has been very vocal in having COVID-19 declared endemic by July. With regard to the Phuket sandbox, which began in July 2021, Minister Pipat said, quote, Thailand started like a rabbit running quickly last year as we opened to visitors. We cannot let the country fall behind as many nations are opening borders and have fewer restrictions than us. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. A serious car accident involving the owner of the upscale resort Sri Panwa on Phuket's east coast, Vorasit Isara, it took place on Thursday, and luckily reports at the moment say there were little to no injuries. Vorasit, or Plawan as he's called, was returning from Kaulak in neighboring Panya province with a few friends when he allegedly lost control of the vehicle on Pechkasem Road at about 7 p.m. His 30 million baht Bentley overturned three times before coming to a stop in the middle of the road, and just after everyone exited the vehicle, the car caught on fire. All four suffered little to no injuries. Just a year ago, on March 14th, Vorasit was involved in a high-profile accident in which he struck a power pole on Saktidet Road on Phuket's Wichit area, and there was a lot of anger online over how police handled the investigation, as police were unwilling to first confirm whether he had been tested for alcohol. Later on, they did confirm that he was tested, but they never revealed the results. Borasit was initially reported to be in a coma and was later discharged from Vashira Phuket Hospital. Police say that section of road had long been dangerous and the scene of many accidents. However, no action was taken to make the curve safer until after Vorasit's accident, with officials spending 30 million baht on road improvements on what has now become known among local residents as Blawan Corner. For more, visit thepuketnews.com. A Vietnamese man who had flown into Phuket, rented a rubber dinghy, and attempted to paddle to India to see his family has been rescued after spending 10 days seemingly lost at sea. Royal Thai Navy rescuers confirmed that the 37-year-old Vietnamese national was picked up on Tuesday, about 5 miles off the Similan Islands, about 80 kilometers off Phuket. After local officers were alerted to the man's plight by a passing fishing trawler, through their investigation, authorities learned that the man had arrived in Phuket earlier in February and rented a rubber dinghy to paddle towards India where his family is currently located and he had no valid visa to enter India. He had been at sea for 10 days before being spotted and rescued. He had no map, compass, change of clothes or GPS according to reports and had been making little to no progress as his boat 
was held up by headwinds in the Andaman Sea. Authorities are now contacting the Vietnamese embassy to determine the next steps. For more, visit the PhuketNews.com. Quality guaranteed since 2012. Call Emmon Painting today. A 54-year-old southern man accused of trafficking illegal Rohingya migrants through Thailand to employers in Malaysia has been arrested after seven years on the run. Sa'ad Udom Sup, aka Bang A, a native of Songkla's Sadao district, which borders Malaysia, was arrested at a tea shop on Thursday. Sa'ad was one of 59 people wanted for the trafficking of 97 illegal Rohingya migrants discovered in Nakonsi Tamarat province back on January 2015. Police suspected Mr. Sa'ad of supplying Rohingya migrants to employers in Malaysia in association with human traffickers in Myanmar who arranged for them to travel from Myanmar and Bangladesh to Thailand by sea, then to Sadao district before being smuggled into Malaysia. Police say he received 50,000 baht per migrant. Sa'ad denied he was a human trafficker but admitted having bank accounts that had been used for the illicit business. He had been wanted on several warrants for human trafficking in Songkla and Nakonsi Tamara province. The case came to light in 2015 with the discovery of mass graves at an abandoned human trafficking camp in Songkla province and a subsequent police investigation uncovered a massive network of traffickers that included an army general and several local police officers, bureaucrats, and businessmen. For more, visit the link in the description. A rally in Bangkok yesterday morning that included several non-government organizations saw them demand the government drop their proposed legislation that aims at monitoring their regulating their activities. The bill is called the Operations of Not-for-Profit Organizations or the NPO bill and it was agreed to by the cabinet in Bangkok in principle in early January with the Social Development and Human Security Ministry gathering opinions through a public survey as required by the constitution which ends this week and will then be forwarded to the cabinet for approval. Nonprofit organizations will be required by law to disclose mission statements and their sources of funding. The bill would prohibit them from engaging in activities detrimental to national security or, quote, social harmony. If they obtain overseas funding, they must list the names of their financial sources and furnish details of the accounts used for receiving the money. Spending plans will also need to be explained to ensure money is not used for the purposes of influencing state power or pandering to the interests of a political party. Any nonprofit organization that breaks the law would have their activities suspended and be liable for criminal action. A member of parliament for the progressive Move Forward Party, an opposition party, stated that at present the survey shows 70% of respondents favored the bill but most of the respondents were people connected to government agencies. NGOs are vehemently opposed to the bill, and earlier this year, as many as 1,870 NGOs issued a statement slamming the draft legislation here in Thailand, accusing the Thai government of trying to stamp out any dissent. On Thursday morning, members of a range of NGOs held a protest outside of the Social Development and Human Security Ministry in Bangkok to voice their opposition to the bill. Meanwhile, proponents of the bill say that it will make NGO activities more transparent. Thanks for joining us here on this Friday edition of Phuket Extra, brought to you by pvcphuket.com. Join us again on Monday, where we'll catch you up with all the news you missed over the weekend. Until then, stay classy, Phuket. Phuket's rapid modernization has made it one of the world's premier holiday destinations. Investors can still buy quality condominiums for as low as 75,000 US dollars and luxury properties can go all the way up to 20 million. Condominiums in Phuket are a safe, secure bricks and mortar investment offering foreigners freehold ownership. Call or email Thai Residential. Phuket's number one trusted real estate advisor to find your perfect Phuket property.